Hi, my friends. It's Velvet. I am um, just getting ready to hopefully finish up um, my steampunk journal. This is the gessoed cover. I don't care that some of it's shining, shiny, showing through um, because it's all going to be covered anyway. I love that the inside is black. I'll have to do something with it because I accidentally got some gesso on this side, but um, it looks pretty good. So uh, I have pulled out a bunch of stuff that you probably can't see. I've got a bunch of stencils that I thought might look nice on this. I've got a couple of different rice papers that I thought could work, um, in particular this one. This one I might save because I'm doing um, kind of a writer's journal and I love the typewriter on there so we'll see what happens with that um, and then I've got some mark making stuff I've got some um, <laughs> you can tell I've been sick <laughs> that's the lid to one of the bottles of cough medicine that's just something to make circles with more stuff I've got my sequin waist um, punchinella and this is actually not bubble wrap it's actually part of our old pool cover <laughs> Our solar cover that uh, that died, which reminds me we have to get a new one. Got my brayer out. I got some Tim Holtz things that I thought might look good on the cover. I've got all the stuff that's left from doing the signatures and the lace and stuff. And I've got a whole bunch of other um, steampunk kind of things, some chipboard and stuff that I can use, I think. So... Um, you know, we'll see what happens, what I want to do with that. I'll put that stuff aside. I think what I'm going to do first... Um, oh, and I've got I've got some paints. Um, the PBO Metallic Iridescent Precious Gold. And the Blick Studio Acrylic Bronze. I've got some light modeling paste from Liquitex. And then I've got some crackle paste. Not paste. Crackle gel, I guess. I don't know as I'll use that because I, I really kind of don't know how to. <laughs> I should practice on something first is what I should say. And then I have several different brands, believe it or not, of sprays, including Tattered Angels. How long has it been since they've sold anything? I don't know when they... I don't, I don't know if they're out of business or when they went out of business, but I've still got it. Um, and they're all kind of in the same family, color family. So I thought I would start with some spray. Um, I've got a roll-off sheet over here and for blotting. I should get my... I'm trying to be, like, really, really prepared. <laughs> so I'm going to get a... Excuse the noise. A couple of baby wipes out. And... Um, so imagine what I'll be doing is pausing a lot so I can dry things in between because I'm too impatient to wait. Um, and then I'll come back to the back to the screen. All right, so let's see what this thing does. This is Lindy's Starburst Sprays, and this is Clam Bake Beige. So I kind of wanted to just get, like, a base. Um... Let's try the Seth Apter. This is Copper Buff Spray. I've used this before. And I think this is, um, it reminded me a little of Rose Gold. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I think that this is the one that, that did. I don't have any problem at all with mixing and matching these colors. This is, oh, that one's the one I just used. Um, we've got Marabou Fashion Shimmer, and this is, well, it's Fabric sh Spray, but let's see if it says Shimmer Copper. You see, this is where um, <laughs> one of my signatures touched the gesso, but it could be kind of cool, you know, with some texture. Oh, this is the one that doesn't want to work, and I never did fix it. So, we do splatters instead. Oh, dear. I think I know why it doesn't work. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> okay, so there's some splatters. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a big old glob. It's a big, huge glob <laughs> of something. 
right on my spine. I guess that's where all the color is. <laughs> okay, well, we'll wipe it up as best as can. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well, my spine is going to be a this nice pretty color. <laughs> Honestly, I had probably, I had assumed and imagined that, huh, that, um, I would be putting something like a fabric ruffle or some uh, trim or lace down the spine anyway, so it's not a huge big deal, but <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, what are you going to do? you got to laugh with it, right? And then this is the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist, and this is um, called It's Brown. <laughs> I wonder if you can find these anywhere any anymore. I mean, maybe they're still in business. I don't know. They could be. I just haven't seen them anywhere. <laughs> Let's see. Did I mix it well enough? Let's see. This could be... Oh, that's nice, isn't that? Oh, okay. All right, so we've got some sprays going on. I am going to pause and dry this up, and then maybe I'll put some um, stencil stuff and marks on there. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back, and I think it's pretty dry. It feels pretty dry. This is how it looks so far with the sprays dried. I love it. I love all these colors together. Um, I love how it went into the crease there. So I think what I'm going to try next is um, some stenciling. And I think... Um, I'm so sorry for the noise. I should have taken this out of the package. I'm going to try these, the clocks here. And then I've got this good one that's like cogs and stuff. So, um, and of course, I'll do the front and the back. So let's get that taken care of. Um, let's see, there's something sticking up here. I don't want that. So I think I'm going to try, first and foremost, um, to put some paint down with... Um, with a brush and see how that works because it it worked fairly well with a tiny little brush the last time I tried that. So let's just see what happens if I were to go like this. And I want to kind of make it look like it's going off the page. So this brush might be a little too stiff. Of course you you want to get into all of those crevices, but you don't want it too much down that it gets underneath. And I, be, I'll be honest with you, I think this could be a cheap stencil, in which case it may not be um, as flush as I would like it to be to the book cover. So I may end up pulling out my sponge to do this because I really don't want it to run if I can help it. Although, it's not the end of the world. It's steampunk. I mean, it's, I don't think it's really meant to be perfect anyway, so. And if there's a little dimension, uh, that's fine with me, too. I mean, I'm not looking for dimension. I'm just saying that it wouldn't be the end of the world. see. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And it can always get covered up. So let me just do this. Whoopsie. And we have right here some bronze that I can maybe brayer just a little tiny bit. Let's go like this. Well, that didn't do much. might have picked up the wrong brayer, but I'm one of those people who really digs just random, you know, just the randomness of using a brayer directly on a project. So I am quite honestly good with that. See, like that right there. I love that look. 
Now we'll just uh, roll off the rest on this roll off paper. Maybe that will become something. <laughs> and you know what? I'm kind of not liking this, so there it goes. <laughs> there it goes. All is right in the world again. And now it's just a happy accident. <laughs> All right, so where do we go now? We are going to do... We are going to do some bubble wrap stuff with the metallic gold. And I should really use a palette knife, maybe, to get this gold onto. Onto this bubble wrap stuff. This bubble wrap looking stuff. There we go. That's a nice amount of gold. Oops. <laughs> My pool cover's falling apart. Just like it did outside. Okay. So I'm a bit of a disaster now, and that's okay. That's okay. What I'm going to do is roll this off onto my sheet. My cord for my phone is in the way. Just get you taken care of, maybe. Hmm. All right. <coughs> what next? What next? Um, I wonder if I should dry this and then put down, um, put down something and then continue with the mark making and the colors. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Going to pause you again and I'll be back. Okay. So it wasn't recording. I thought it was, um, what I did was I put down this rice paper, uh, the gears using some. Uh, crafters workshop gel medium all of the gold is not dry yet and I don't want to heat it too much because I don't want anything to bubble so I thought I would work a little bit on the back cover where it is a little bit drier and I wanted to put maybe some of this down but I ran I, I got a sponge that I can maybe sponge through so this is this is what I'm hoping I'm gonna kind of use a Being careful not to move the stencil. Oh, I like it. It went over the edge, but that's okay. That is perfectly fine. I do like it. Good. So that worked. Um, just a little added interest over there. Maybe I will roll a little bit. Kind of randomly. This is definitely not my best roller, <laughs> but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. It's, it's going to be fine. It is going to be fine. And I kind of like how it makes me think of red brick. So that's kind of neat. And then I am just, oops, I'm sorry, the camera jiggled. I am just going to roll off the excess over here onto my roll-off paper. And maybe I can make something of that tomorrow or later. There we go. 
I put out quite a bit of that paint, didn't I? <laughs> oh well. Maybe we'll try. Maybe we'll just try a little tiny bit. I like, yep, I like it. Good, good. All right. Um, now it sort of looks like there's an awful lot of red on here, but you know what? Some of that's going to get covered anyway with um, this. All right, that's going to look nice. Yeah, that's still damp. Darn it. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is make some marks with the black. And how do I want to go about doing that? I think I want to... I love this stencil right here. I could do something down here in the corner with the black. Let's get a little bit out here. Dump too much, but... Um... Well, just try another corner of the sponge. Rows of numbers always look cool, don't they? cool. I like it. Yes, indeed I do. I do like it. Get that black off of there. Cool. <clears throat> um, oh, we need some circles, of course. Where are... There's my circle tools. We can start with the black, I guess. Big fan of circles. I used to doodle a lot. Um, did I start in high school? I can't remember. Um, and I always drew circles. And they were always touching. And I'd just have a whole page full of circles in my margins. I know I did it in college. Um, but I don't know. I'm not absolutely certain if I did it in high school, but it's funny that it has come back to me now. It didn't ever occur to me that I would be using circles the way I do today in junk journals and that sort of thing. So, okay. And maybe... Part of the big one in here. There we go. Oh, that didn't work. I guess it's drying up on me. There we go. There. Let me see if I can pick that up and roll it off over here. Not a huge big deal if I can't. Okay. All right. Now I am pretty certain that this is still not dry yet. Actually, let's do let's do a little bit more. And let's um let's do some white. Do some white mark making. Um we could do just a very tiny bit of punchinella right here. This corner. Mm 
And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. <laughs> Do some here. It's kind of a cool way to get rid of a color you don't want as much of on, a, on your page or your project, I should say. Get a little bit more over here. There we go. I like it. Oh, it looks like a blob, but I don't care. <laughs> and then um, I definitely wanted to do some circles. And then I'm going to do some lines. Kind of digging it now. Sometimes it just takes a little while for, for it to look the way you actually want it to. Or to look cohesive, I guess. Okay. I'm probably making such a mess of all my stuff over here. And what else? We'll use the other. Oh, that's not even, I don't think. Oh, let's see if it'll work. Oh, it will. Okay. I guess it doesn't have to be even. I really love going off the page, too. Like, this is part of a much bigger project. Yeah. Liking it. There we go. Get the ink off this way, or the paint off. It's so funny how I always call it ink. Now I feel like I've got too much white and not enough black. But I'm going to go in with um, some lines, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now, <laughs> this little lid just fell off of one of these. I had it double lidded for some reason. So there we go. It wanted to be a mark making tool, apparently. Here. Now get that brayered off. where we are right now. I'm going to pause and get some of this to dry and then I'm going to come back and try putting this on and then making some uh, line marks on this and then attaching um, probably some of these cogs to give it, give it some texture and dimension as well as some words I think so um, I will be back. Okay I'm back. So what I ended up doing is I brought in some Prussian blue, Arteza, Arteza, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and I put some there. I really like that there a little bit. And then I just, you know, here, there, and everywhere. And I like how, how that looks. So I think this might be dry enough now that I can put this down. So... I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go like that. All right. So let's grab our brush and our matte medium. Let's see how we do. I 
suspect that there's some spots that I've missed, but it should soak through the rice paper and work. And I know I've said this in other videos. Um, I always try to work from the center out so um, it doesn't bubble up and wrinkle. Now see what I'm not liking is that because I cut because I cut this, it's kind of showing the the edge. Um, but I think once that dries, I can take care of it. I can take care of it with um, distress ink. Um, I think I'm just gonna kind of fold this over. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Shouldn't make any difference on the back here. If it lifts, um, I will just use some sandpaper and sand it off. I kind of like how it looks uh, going over the edge. Now, did I get everything? I also want to make sure that I'm in the frame here. All right, I think that I have everything. Make sure that it feels tacky everywhere. So see up here it doesn't look bad, but down here I can see the white of the rice paper. So I wanna do something with that. All right, so I wrap that up again. Cover this. And then what I wanted to do is um, paint a comp... <laughs> I have a hard time with that sort of thing. Um, I wanted to... I'm going to set this aside and see what I can do about these. So um, I love this. So let's get some scissors and get these t this taken apart. These are probably the best scissors for that. Let's go this way. There we go. I wish I could tell you where these came. Actually, you know what? I think I know where they came from. I think this is Stamperia. I'm almost certain it's Stamperia because that's where I got that rice paper. I think that rice paper is Stamperia as well. So I'll bet you this is. All right. So um, I'm probably going to want something else. The light bulb's cool. Um, I don't want a lot of the same thing. Clocks, globe, gears, cogs. I could do that, but then I would feel like I had to put something on the balloon part of that, which wouldn't be impossible to do. I mean, you could always cover it like that, or even like that. Um, too much pressure, too much pressure. Maybe we do this. Maybe we do this. The I apologize. I keep bringing it this out of frame. I think. There we go. And then um, just use this little thing to sand that down. This might be a nail thing. I don't know. So I know that I want, oops, this is, this was a really good color. And then, um, I can actually mix this with a little black maybe to darken it up and then, um, put some patina in there too. I've got some wax that I can do use. Let's see. Oh, that might have been a little too much black. 
Oh, I'm so silly. Aren't I silly? <laughs> One little tiny drop of black is all you need. <laughs> there, that's more like what I wanted it to look like, I think. And I don't know. It may just look like a blob of brown. <laughs> and that's okay, too, because I can highlight this with... Um, my gilding wax. So I got me a brown. And you know what? I'm going to use the same color here. And I don't even care if some parts look a little bit red. Because, well, that's the beauty of rusting things, right? You've got so many colors going on when, um, when copper, when you've got copper and iron and, you know, all kinds of cool stuff going on. Now, when I lift this up, whoops, whoops, let's get that one. So you can see we've got, we've got some stuff going on and that's pretty cool. I like, I like it. Yes, I do. In fact, I might want to make a circle on my book with this color. And just kind of stick it there because it works. There we go. I mean, it's, it's drying anyway, so. Yeah, I know you can't see this, and I don't want to pull it over because um, I've got so much paint right here in front of me. There. Get some on the spine. And of course, once this is done, I will do a flip through. Now I'm just going to do a few lines in this if I can. Well, I tried. <laughs> there. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, so now these have to sit and dry. Maybe I'm going to try and get a little bit more of this red on this. And it can dry like that. Okay. So you're going off again until I'm back and ready to glue these. All right, so I did just a couple more things. Um, I forgot to turn the, <laughs> the camera back on. Um, so I wanted to show you how this turned out. I used some patina wax on these and then glued them down, grabbed a word, grabbed one of the little ladies, a butter butterfly. Over here I put a little washi tape. Um, made a few marks here and there. Um, but not a whole lot. I haven't done a whole lot more to it. I'm going to wait for all of this to settle and dry, and then I'm going to go over some of this with um, some of the um, gel medium, I think, to kind of, you know, keep it in place. And then I think I will call this cover done. And then these are the four signatures. I'm not sure these four signatures are fitting in this. <laughs> We've got a bit of a gator mouth going on, but... It sure does feel nice with those four signatures. It feels nice. It looks good. And, you know, if I, if, if I do the enclosure in a way that, um, you know, this ties relatively tight right here, it doesn't look like a gator mouth. So, um, yeah, I think, I think that's how it's going to go. And I'm pretty sure I am going to cover the spine with some uh, lace or trim, uh, simply because I've got to put four, <laughs> four signatures through here, and I'm not sure how that's going to turn out because I am not the best at, at binding um, and getting them straight, but I'm gonna try my best to get it right. Uh, so that's where I stand now, and thank you so much for tuning in and taking a peek, hitting the like button and subscribe. I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Have a great day, bye.